Good morning and welcome. On this Advent Sunday, we begin a new church year. And I want to thank the Altar Guild for making this look so beautiful. We have the Advent wreath uh, that will light in just a moment. And I have wonderful news for you. For the first time today, we will get to sing a hymn. So you have to stay for the whole service because it's the last hymn. I didn't want you singing and leaving. <laughs> so you can open it now. We found out so late it's not even on a slide. Turn your hymn book, your blue hymn book, to 89. And what we're going to do is we're going to do, Jason is going to sing the first verse. So it's one, three, five, and seven. You can remember that. Then verse three, the people on the side of the lectern are going to come in. Number five, you're going to join them. And the people at the chapel end are going to come in with verse seven. But you know what? You sing any time, it'll be fine. Other than the first, we'll give Jason that. Now, the news gets better. You ready? You ready? Next week, you're all going to come and everyone else is going to come because there'll be coffee hour. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> now, now, at the end of church today, after the dismissal, there'll just be a bit of a pause. And then, because we don't want you going downstairs, because you all slip out, we're, we're going to up here have the draw for the Christmas basket. So do stay for that. And then after that, I will convene us in an informal parish meeting to talk about the deficit. So I hope you stay for that. But as I've said, that's up to you. Now, last of all, I said in the, my office, the announcements are longer than my sermon. Um, I have a letter to read from our Archbishop. So I will do that. This just came in on Friday. Dear people of God at St. Michael's, I love Paul's words of encouragement in his first letter to the Thessalonians on this first Sunday of Advent. So let me begin this short note by repeating some of them to you. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. 1 Thessalonians 3.12. The source of our love for one another and for everyone is the Lord, whose coming we anticipate in this holy season of the year. As we turn our eyes to him, becoming holy people of God and loving our neighbors, may our hope and faith and love increase more and more. There are two items of news I wish to share with you today. The first is to let you know that the Reverend Enid Powell will not be returning to St. Michael and All Angels following her leave. She's been in conversation with the Bishop of the Arctic and has accepted a position in that diocese beginning sometime in January 2022. Reverend Enid will continue to reside in the rectory at St. Michael's until she moves north. Please pray for her as she prepares for this move and a new ministry in our church. There will be a variety of reactions amongst members of the congregation to this news. It is disappointing that an appointment which began in good faith and with great hope, an expectation for a new beginning for the parish, did not work out as we all hoped. Though we look to move on, I do not think we can do so faithfully without some deep reflection about what has transpired. The second piece of news is that, God willing, I will be traveling to Thunder Bay in mid-January and plan to be with you at your Sunday worship on January 16th. 
I'm looking forward to breaking bread with you and to thanking both Bishop Victoria and Archdeacon Deborah for their pastoral presence and strong leadership in the parish. Thank you for the trust you have placed in me through this time. Paul ends his letter to the Thessalonians by reminding them that the one who called them is faithful. Let us hold onto these words of hope. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Anne Algoma. So I just remind you that on Thursday there is a series on hope at the Eucharist at 10 and that this Wednesday the Advent study series begins. But right now I'm going to slip down the back and join Paul is leading us in as our crucifer today. That's another first. And um, we'll start the service. God bless you all. A herald voice is sounding, Christ is nigh, it seems to say, cast away the dreams of darkness, O ye children of the day. Waken by the solemn warning, let the earth bound soul arise, Christ our Son, all sloth dispelling, shines upon the of Advent, let us ask our Father in heaven to fill our hearts with grace. No? So light it again, please, thanks. Right. Heavenly Father, we look forward to the celebration of Christmas and the coming of the Lord in glory. Bless this Advent wreath and all of us as we pray around it. Fill us with your life and strengthen us for our daily tasks. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray again, Heavenly Father, as we begin this Advent, give light to our eyes and peace to our hearts. May the Lord find us watching and waiting in joy when he comes. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from you the most secret sorry. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from Jeremiah 33. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior, the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians, beginning at chapter 3, verse 9. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly 
that we may see your face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by all the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then you will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your hearts because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. May only the truth be spoken and only the truth received. Amen. Many years ago, when I was still a parish priest, I guess I am now, but it's different, <laughs> I received a call from a teenager I didn't know. It was fascinating. It became clear she was a Catholic high school student who in sitting down to write an assignment for her religion class at school, realized she didn't have a clue what the answer was. So she was very ingenious. She called an Anglican church and asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Why me? I was at the parish of all souls and it was at the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but wait till you hear the question. The question is, what is the three coming of Christ? Hmm. What is the three coming of Christ? Not three comings, but what is the three coming of Christ? Well, let's be honest, the first one you can all guess. It's what we're partially getting ready for now. 
which is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ as a babe in the manger born of Mary at Christmas. That's the easy one. The second one's also pretty straightforward. I imagine most of you have got there. It's what the Gospel of Luke and 1 Thessalonians speak of in today's readings. It's the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ at the end of time. This second coming is the day of our redemption in the fullest sense. It will be a time of judgment, but also a time of joy. As you heard, scripture says it will be preceded by a time of great difficulty. And I have to say that some people have spent untold time and effort trying to figure out exactly when the second coming will come. They seem to totally overlook the fact that scripture says, Jesus says, of the time and the season, no one knows. But they still try and do it. And still other people have made a lot of money writing books and producing movies about exactly when that second coming will come. Don't try it. <laughs> the third coming of Christ is by far the hardest to guess, and yet I'm prepared to say that once you hear it, you'll realize you knew it all along. It's that we have right now, as we sit here in church, but even if we were elsewhere, the presence of Jesus with us. This morning, we'll receive the body of Christ at the Eucharist. We have already received the word of God as scripture was read and sung. We know we're in God's presence whenever we give thanks or pray for a loved one who is ill or traveling. Indeed, we're also in the presence of Christ whenever we pray, even if it's an arrow prayer like help or sorry. But it goes even beyond those encounters. Even when God in Christ is the furthest thing from our thoughts, we remain in God's presence. The good news is that when we forget God, God does not forget us. But here's the challenge, and it's a big challenge. God in Christ is not with us in a passive way, like maybe a cat would be curled up in your lap purring, or the radio playing in the background ever so softly, you don't really, you're not really aware that it's playing. No, Christ's presence is a challenge and an invitation. Christ invites us here and now to partner with God and to be his hands and feet, his heart and his voice. He challenges us to be an active, engaged disciple. As disciples of Christ, we're invited to embody his mission on earth. In John chapter 20, we hear these words, Jesus to the disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. That's a tall order. Being a disciple isn't just about keeping rules. It's about giving expression to Christ's will for humanity. That's why, of course, the church is called the body of Christ. It's an incredibly high calling. Teresa of Avila was a Catholic nun of the Carmelite order in the early 16th century. She's rightly famous for her reforming of that order. But if anything, she's even more famous from something she said that I'll read in just a moment. I quote, Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, you are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. Four centuries later, another Teresa, one you might actually remember, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, would turn around that perspective and say it in a different way. 
When asked by a reporter what she did first thing in the morning, she said, um, the sisters and I rise very early and we go to the chapel and we spend an hour before the Blessed Sacrament. Mother, he said, the reporter said, you work very hard. Don't you think God could give you an extra hour of sleep for all you're going to do during the day? And she said to him, you know, it's important for us to spend time with Jesus at the start of the day, lest when we go out onto the streets to care for the dying, we fail to recognize him there. That answer has stayed with me. Thus, one Teresa in the 16th century tells us to be the hands and feet and eyes of Christ. Well, the other tells us to see Christ in every person you meet. Both women of faith remind us of the third coming of Christ and ask what we're going to do with this intimacy we have with Jesus, the Son of God. Now this Advent, we are invited to prepare for the first and second coming of Christ, as well as asking ourselves, how can I embody Christ for others and see Christ in every person? It's a big question and a rich and worthwhile invitation. In the less than the month that I have been privileged to be with you here at St. Michael and All Angels, I've been deeply touched to hear and see about the many ways people in this parish engage in the mission of Christ. There is the mission to seafarers and the undercover project, first time I've encountered that, and the Primates World Relief and Development Fund, which is asking for people to help make vaccination for COVID-19 possible in other countries. The list goes on, and you are to be commended for all the good work you do. I wonder if you realize that even this building in which we sit has a ministry to the community. I know AA meets here at least three times a week. Several First Nations groups do outreach from here, and even in the last week, there was a group here for three days, packing boxes that will go out to different reserves and First Nations. There's also a parenting course and many other groups. This past week, the parish board met in our narthex because the hall was being used by others. I think that's fabulous. There's one way, that's one way of being the hands and feet the voice and heart of Christ, as well as recognizing Christ in every person. After church today, there's an informal parish meeting when I will explain what the board decided to do to pay down the deficit by year end, $35,000 deficit. It's up to you whether you stay for the meeting or not, but I do have to say now it's not just about money. It's about the three coming of Christ and our response to be Christ's mission and ministry here and now, before he comes again. Today, we begin a new church year. Advent means coming. And we enter the season of Advent in preparation for our Lord's coming. These four weeks, are not about getting your Christmas shopping done. They're not about lining up to see Santa, though I don't think many of you would be doing that, or preparing the absolutely perfect Christmas dinner. Advent is about personal preparation for the three coming of Christ. You know, I never did find out how she did on her assignment, that Catholic student when she dared to make a cold call to an Anglican priest on the three coming of Christ. But I can tell you that the question is worth pondering by every one of us.
Let me finish with a quotation from the 11th century. I've been bouncing around. Bernard of Clairvaux was, believe it or not, one of the most influential Christian preachers of all time. This is from one of his sermons. We know that the coming of the Lord is threefold. The third coming is between the other two, and it is not visible in the way they are. At his first coming, the Lord was seen on earth and lived among men who saw him and hated him. At his last coming, all flesh shall see the salvation of our God, and they shall look on him whom they pierced. In the middle, the hidden coming, only the chosen see him, and they see him within themselves, and so their souls are saved. The first coming was in flesh and weakness. The middle coming is in spirit and power. And the final coming will be in glory and majesty. The middle coming is like a road that leads from the first coming to the last. And then after a bit he says, if you think I am inviting what I'm saying about the middle coming, listen to the Lord himself. If anyone loves me, he will keep my words and the Father will love him and we will come to him. Now, in the 21st century, we rephrase that to make it more inclusive. Women respond as well as men, but the message is the same. As disciples of Jesus, we are commissioned to do Christ's will and further his mission on earth. It is our calling to ready the earth for the coming of the kingdom of God. What a marvelous invitation as we enter a new church here. But the question remains, what is our response? Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come to no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray.
With uh, tender and comfort and transforming power, you come into our midst, O God of mercy and light, might. Make ready a way in the wilderness, clear a straight path in our hearts, and form us into a repentant people that the advent of your Son may find us watchful and eager for the glory he reveals. We ask this through him whose coming is certain, whose day draws near, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. In our Algoma Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for all lay workers within our parishes who play an integral role in the administration of our churches. In our Worldwide Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray for Igreja Episcopal Anglicana do Brazil. In the Council of the North, we pray for the Diocese of Caledonia and Bishop David Lehman. We pray for Archbishop Anne and our Bishop in Residence, Victoria. Father God, at this busy time of year, may our Archbishop Anne and Bishop in Residence, Victoria, hear and feel your peace. Be with them, Lord, as they seek to do your will with faithfully serving you and guiding us on our spiritual journey through Advent. Amen. We pray for the Reverend Enid. We give thanks for the appointment of the Reverend Enid to the Diocese of the Arctic. We ask your richest bless blessings upon her move and her ministry in her new parish. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We pray for the Queen and the leaders of the nations. Most merciful God, we pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Amen. We pray for all those who are affected by the floods in BC. God of compassion, you hear the cries of all who are in trouble or distress. Accept our prayers for those whose lives are affected by the flooding in British Columbia. Be with them in their hour of need. Grant them perseverance and courage to face the future. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for the sick and those that have asked us to pray for them. Almighty and everlasting God, the comfort of those that are ill and the strength of those who suffer, hear the prayers of your people. We especially remember those on our hearts and minds. Sandra, Skip, Marianne, Kathy, Patrick, Bishop Tom, and Marion. Grant to everyone in distress mercy, relief, and refreshment through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite you to turn to page 119, number 12, as we have our prayers specifically for Advent. Page 119, number 12. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Lord and head of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. Lord Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings will keep silence before you, and all peoples will summon you to their aid. Come, 
set us free and delay no more. Lord Jesus, come through. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut. You shut and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. Lord Jesus, come soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness, come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Jesus, come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creature you fashioned from clay. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, Lord our God. Lord Jesus, come soon. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this holy table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You stand as you are able. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Did save our lost and guilty race by healing. The 
God of love and power, your word stirs within us the expectation of the coming of your Son. Accept all we offer you this day and sustain us with your promise of eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the fullness of time came among us in our flesh and opened to us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge this world, that we, without shame or fear, may rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice, a praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Spirit, Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ, and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, 
the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And be us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, we being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. of Christ died.
Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, you have fed us with the bread of eternal life. Keep us ever watchful that we may be ready to stand before the Son of Man. We ask this in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose, whose power working in us can, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this night and always. Amen. Amen. Time to get out your hymn books. <laughs> 89, verses 1, 3, 5, 7. Verse 1, verse 3, verse 5, verse 7. There are no losers. Do what you like. <laughs> oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive